Hello everyone, I'm Forrest Fairley, and on behalf of St. Barnabas Episcopal Church here in Montgomery, Ohio, and particularly the Endowment Committee, of which I'm proud to serve on, we're here today to introduce you to our first video podcast. And I'd like to introduce my first guest, who is a very familiar face here within the parish, who knows a lot about the world of leaving a legacy, developing your future legacy as it relates to your path with Christ. His name is Tom Kirkpatrick. Welcome, Tom. Thanks, Forrest. It's nice to be here, and I'm especially happy to have a chance to talk about wills mm. because it's a subject that people think they'll deal with when they're retired. Mm. and they don't like to get engaged, but it's one of the most important things the church can encourage each parishioner to do today. Well, that is the title of our video podcast today, Wills 101. So, correct me, uh, you were once the chair of our committee that is called the Endowment Committee, correct? Absolutely right. I was fortunate enough to be the first chair of the endowment committee, and uh, that led me, I think, to my passion about helping to guarantee the financial future of the St. Barnabas Parish, and I think my interest in helping parishioners learn about the financial steps they can take for both their own family and if they want to leave a legacy. Ah, that word, legacy. It really strikes at the heart of one's faith. And I was hoping that, and I apologize for putting you on the spot with this, but might you be able to recall a biblical passage uh, that sums up any previous possible thoughts about legacies? You know, Jesus talks a lot about money in the Bible. Oh. But one of my favorite passages that I think is worth reviewing is Luke 12, verse 33 and 34, where Jesus urges us to give our money to help the poor because, quote, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, unquote. This scripture is not saying that it's about how much you give. Instead, what he's doing is he's saying your giving affects your level of involvement and interest and commitment with God. Oh, I like that. Thank you that, for that wonderful piece of scripture reflection. And, and speaking of reflection, uh, our future podcast that we're going to do is talking about the entire definition of that mysterious word called endowment. And what does endowment do within a church? And so today, however, we wanna take a segment of that out and really talk about the subject matter that's quite frankly a little on edge with a lot of people. It, it scares them, it, 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 it causes them to not really address their own mortality, if you will. And it's about developing a formal will that protects their family in the event of their passing. So with that in mind, I'd like for you, if you would, to comment on just that. Yeah, wills is a subject that is taboo in many families. When Sue and I talk about it at home, she wants to put her fingers in her ears <laughs> and and so I've had to do most of the documentation of listing assets, even writing things down like when Sue dies, what charities will be the beneficiaries of any gifts. And so she's taken a red pen and marked up what I've written for her, but she doesn't, like many people, want to deal with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So listen, before we begin and get into this whole subject matter of wills, I did some facts checking on just that very topic and can I just say it was eye-opening I thought we could play a little word association game if we if you're up to the challenge and I'll throw out a statement about wills and in you com comment okay so here we go 
first fact check. The government will decide. Boy, that's a really true statement. Mm. If you die without a will, it's called dying intestate. And if you die intestate, the government decides who receives what. It doesn't matter what discussions have been had in the family about who's supposed to get what. That's all irrelevant. Mm. And while there are guidelines, generally the spouse is the first in line, followed by children and parents and grandchildren and siblings. But the point is, if you die without a will, you're going to be uh, controlled by what the court says is going to happen, regardless of what the family members want. Mm. And it's going to cost you a lot of money as well. Well, that's true. Yes, yes. All right, so next fact, fact number two. Making a will now saves you money later. That's great advice and very true. There's a misconception that, cost, that a, a will costs thousands of dollars and takes a lot of time with an attorney. Well, the truth is you can get a free will on the Internet today. And in the time it takes you to make a list of your assets and sit down and fill out some forms, maybe 20 to 30 minutes tops, you can have a will that will save you money. Because if you die without a will, you're going to have court fees and you're going to have legal fees because you're going to have to go through probate. What people don't realize is that many estates if you die with a will and with the assets titled properly, the court never even needs to be involved. It can all be handled just by the executor. So you could potentially save thousands. Okay, one more, Tom. True or false? Wills are just for seniors. You know, that to me is the biggest mistake that people make. A will needs to be completed for everyone not just somebody who's getting close to retirement. And I'll give you some examples of that in a few minutes. Preparing and executing a will is really pretty simple. Mm. It involves making a list of your assets, and that's important, including any special family treasures, the heirlooms that were passed down from grandma, and any final wishes, gifts that you want to make to a church or to a grandchild. So once you make a list of the assets, those special family treasures, you really then just need to decide who is the executor mm. of the estate. And if you have minor children, who is going to take care of them um, to nominate guardians. Once you've got that information together, 20 minutes later, you've got a will. Well, excellent points to consider for sure. Okay, next one, true or false? Most people don't have wills. Sadly for us, that's true. Over half of the people, adults in our country, still don't have a will. And that's despite the fact that get, get one for free, or in many cases, the company they works for has a program that would offer a free Will And I think, again, it's this misconception that putting a will together is expensive and time-consuming. But this is one of the most important legal documents people will put together, particularly young people. So, Tom, it, it just appears to me that you have a very strong emotional tie to this whole subject matter of wills. Is that perhaps because you have a personal story to possibly pass on to our folks today? I, I do. And uh, I have had two experiences with people who died with wills but didn't have a list of assets. So when Sue's mom died and we met with the funeral home and they said, do you want to bury her in this cheap, crappy coffin or this nice, expensive mm -hmm. coffin? We didn't know how to answer that. Mm. Um, jewelry, she was buried with her wedding ring. One of the sisters said mom would have wanted it to go to the grandchildren. The other sister said mom would want to be buried with the wedding ring. 
my dad passed away and the priest in the Episcopal Church asked, okay, your dad said no flowers. What charities would you like monies to go to in lieu of flowers? And we didn't know. Um, there are lots of decisions that can be made much easier for us who are alive if somebody takes the time to make a list and make some simple decisions about cremation, yes or no, jewelry, yes or no, family heirlooms. My, we were talking with Sue's mom about what was going to happen to family heirlooms, and she said, well, it, it, we don't have to worry about it. The kids will sort it out just like we did when my mother died. And what she forgot is that when her mother died, her older sister took some things, and so for 10 years, they didn't speak to each other because of her mom not being clear on assets. So as they talked about that, Sue said, yeah, like grandma's emerald ring. That's my birthstone, so I'm looking forward to that. And Sue's sister said, well, I wanted the emerald ring. Mm. So there's some simple things that can be done to list assets, but I run a company, and twice in the last 15 years, I've had young men die, and I've had to go and meet with their families. Mm. The first one was a 45-year-old who died of a heart attack at the end of a work shift mm. without a will, despite the fact the company offered one for free. And I had to meet with his wife, and there were two children, and explain to her how it was going to work. For example, she said, I don't need his truck, Tom, and tools. Would the company like to buy those? And I said, well, the court will decide if and when you can sell those mm. because there is no will. And as she went through and asked me questions about assets, my answer in most cases was, well, you really can't make any decision or you can't do that. The court will decide. It was sad. The other situation was a young man of 25. Mm. He died in his sleep on a Friday night. And like a lot of young men, he felt he was invincible, probably prided himself on not going to the doctor, not realizing he had a medical condition. And when I sat down with his mother and his girlfriend, who he lived with, who was pregnant with their child, um, he was divorced. So he had a prior wife and a child with that first wife. And as they asked, okay, who gets the house? Mm. Who gets the truck? I said, well, the court will decide. It could well be that the house you're living in and the truck will go to his child from his prior wife. Mm. Fortunately, he did have a 401k that he had titled in mom's name after his divorce, and he had a life insurance policy through the company that he had titled in his girlfriend's name. But frankly, it was going to be a mess because he didn't take the time to fill out a will because he was young. Yes. Well, Tom, that story was quite the testament to anyone listening who has been on the decision fence for investigating a will or getting a will. But your advice is well taken, and there's nothing stronger than a personal example. So I do have one question that kind of gets into this realm of endowment, which is going to be our next video episode. And you have some experience behind that, but I'm, I'm looking at one idea, one creative idea that could also be a very affordable idea for a single person, young married couple, a couple that's been married for 10 or 15 years, even up to a senior or senior couples about what they can do to honor their faith in God, their journey in God, and also leave a legacy. Do you have any input on that? That's a great question, Forrest. I encourage young people to consider inexpensive term life insurance to be able to mm. make sure that their family and their children will be taken care of in the event of a sudden death. And I've seen what happens firsthand when that additional insurance is not in place. The benefit of something like inexpensive term life insurance policy is that it can be in place when you have young children, but at some point in your life when the children are grown and you no longer need that, 
you can change the beneficiary of that term life insurance policy to someone like the church, to an oh endowment my. fund. Really? And then you can leave a legacy for future generations. So that's my answer to your question. Well, that is an amazing and significant idea for the folks to remember whenever they start doing their future life planning. So thank you for being here with us and, and providing that very rich and valuable information pulled from your own personal experience. And I f trust, folks, that you have benefited from this, our first video podcast with a very delicate subject that I think Tom did a great job on explaining that takes all the fear and questions out of getting your own will in Wills 101. And I hope you will join us next time whenever we start unpacking the box called What is Endowment? So on behalf of our endowment committee here at St. Barnabas Episcopal Church, I'd like to thank you for joining us today and we look forward to providing you more insight to the entire world of endowments and wills and other things that are about life legacies. Thank you.